uh, one last example, share with you the local example. Raymond, all the retail outlet, when we are about to start the, doing the training, the president for the retail, the, he know me from Akaya days when I was doing, doing some work for him some years ago. Security officer, the guy who's standing at the doorstep, uh, open the door, close the door, and uh, like a security person, and this person is outsourced, and this person is uh, pretty old in the you know, age wise, uh, and has been with the, with the company for many years, typically in many of their outlets. So the, the boss was asking me, in Raymond, the, the boss was asking me, when we do training, can we do, when, we, when we conduct training program, uh, are we going to train all those uh, security officers as well? They are not highly educated, they are not, uh, uh, they may not be able to follow us. So and so forth. I was telling him, why not give it a try? So first time, before we do a training, I went to their shop and do a machine shop and they do know who am I. I went to the shop. Uh, before I want uh, to enter, the security officer opened the door. And I looked at him, I smiled to him, I said, good afternoon. He looked at me, no, no expression. He must be quite shocked. I spent about half an hour in the shop, uh, shopping through because of the, uh, as a consultant, I tried to understand what's going on. Half an hour later on, I was about to leave. He was there, opened the door for me. And I said, thank you. He looked at me again. This guy must be nuts. Why say thank you to me? So we put all these people for training, go through training, simple training, simple service mindset training. Two months down the line, I visited a shop. I, I went to the shop. He opened the door. He smiled to me. Not that he can't do. He can smile. Not that he can't smile. It's whether am I uh, aware about the importance of doing all these things. When I was about to leave, he said thank you, not me anymore. So. All our people are all trainable. They, you know me, a PhD holder to deliver good service. Uh, at the end of the day, it's all about mindset. The mindset from senior level all the way to the front line. One of those car companies I was working some years ago, senior level starting with a mindset of uh, they looking at many other car manufacturer, their design are uh, use their good a piece of scrap metal. This was their term. Because they look at other designs like what? This is their design. But slowly we, we, we tone it down to the level that for them to see the picture that they must deliver not just a product but the rest of a service experience or component. So anyway, a quick sharing with all of us, the end journey, we are looking at something in this manner and hopefully the quick sharing will give you some simple the, the idea here and there. Uh, though the, I didn't quite the, go down to all the detail on how to get this thing done. Uh, uh, we we work on this for years in such a way that go into a partnership with many organizations by now and uh, become fairly long term with many of our client organizations and uh, end outcome is the same we want to see result they also want to see result and I think it's, 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 a, it's a way that we always partner our organization uh, if you happen to travel via Hyderabad Airport last uh, couple of years uh, I was the one who worked with the Hyderabad Airport before the new terminal was opened. 2008, March, they opened their door. 2010, 2008, they wasn't uh, 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 assessed by an organization called ACI, Airport Council International, based in Switzerland. 2008, March, they opened their door. 2010, they were awarded by ACI top 5 in the world not top 5 in Asia, top 5 in the world. We go to the net, you can check all this information quite easily. Uh, top 5, who are the top 5? Changi was number 2, Incheon and South, South uh, Korea is number 1. In the year, the Hong Kong was number 4, Beijing was, uh, not, uh, Hong Kong was number 3, Beijing was number 4, uh, Hyderabad, our dear Hyderabad was number 5. 2011, Hyderabad the, for the 5 to 15 million passenger, they were awarded by ACR number 1 in the world. I mean the question is, it's not so much a magical, but it's a common sense. Put all the common sense into a system, into a practice in people's mind. For people, okay, so you have any questions, uh, do let me know. Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. You want to take this? Thank you. Uh, I have a question. Yes, please. In your opinion, uh, what is that that went wrong with the food challenge? Of course, they had a lot of SQ implementation. Which one again? One more time. Kingfisher Airlines. Oh. 
this is a long story. But I guess I guess it's a very different uh, challenge they are facing. I mean, I, I may be wrong. Uh, you look at the India airlines so far, all airlines are not making a single money cent of money throughout the years, through, through over the, the many years, including our dear Jet Airways, are still not making money. I guess uh, it's, it's more than just service per se, Let me, let's be upfront. While well, we say service experience is important, I guess they are constrained by a lot more industry the factors right now within India context right now. Margin is very low, margin is very low. Uh, uh, competition is uh, the, the diluting all the all the load factor that they have. Uh, unfortunately, there are all these are the challenges that they are facing. And when they start uh, flying to international route, they are competing with a lot more big player, more established than them before them. Not the other big player are good, but big player started the journey long time ago. So unfortunately, some all these things is become uh, quite a messy thing for them. I was told they are uh, piecing it together and uh, will come back eventually. I was told about it the last couple of days. Uh, I used to love to travel to uh, King Fisher when I take a domestic flight because it's uh, such a refreshing experience. It's such, such a beautiful, refreshing experience. Go up to the flight, they bought the aircraft, they give you a bottle of those uh, lemon uh, juice drink and all kinds of those things, and the chairman will uh, appear on the screen. I personally do blah blah blah, all those things. <laughs> Nothing wrong with all those things. I think they were hammered by a lot of industry factors. All airlines are not doing well worldwide, not just in India. Of course, some airlines are still making money. Singapore airlines happen to be lucky uh, a little bit uh, more than others, making uh, still making money. But the margin has uh, dropped so much compared to ten years ago. It's the whole the whole the whole the worldwide uh, industry the situation. Uh, you look at Asia airlines, while well, some of them are doing fairly well. You look at budget airlines, some of them are doing very well. But uh, uh, Air Asia in Malaysia, they are doing very well. Very, such a good job, I must say. They expand very fast. But you look at all the airlines in the West, none of them is uh, doing well. None of them, literally. And I think the, when the airline industry bounce back again, I think Asia has more chance than them. Uh, if you follow all the key indicators in the industry, all the top airline, all the top hotel, all the top airport, all in Asia. Every single one, all, in, all the top five, all in Asia. In fact, recently there's one the report the published in Singapore. They say why all the Asia company are always better than the West uh, 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 in our service, and they all acknowledge that. I mean, uh, it's a different approach. Nothing wrong with about the West com uh, company from the West, but rather I think the approach is very different. More so, I think it's our culture in a sense. And uh, every time I say in India we have advantage because people are generally warm in, in nature. You have advantage for that. Singapore people are not warm. Singapore people are friendly but not warm. You, you notice that Singapore people are friendly but not warm. People here are warm. Singapore is way too efficient as a country. Way, way, way too exp uh, uh, efficient. Everything is clocked in. You know the airport. We even monitor first luggage twelve minutes, last luggage twenty nine minutes, business class last luggage twenty five. It's all clocked in. You can't run too far from there. And uh, of course, there's a price you got to pay when you are way too efficient. You go to the other extreme. So somehow I guess we still need to strike a balance between warm and efficient. We still need to strike a balance in a sense. So for airline King Fisher is a different ballgame. Uh, the personal view I think is a lot more industry factors. Uh, the fuel price is enough to kill them. Unfortunately, such a high percentage. Yeah. So we have some of the airline industry is so funny that everybody views the airline makes money except in the airline. The airports make money, the fuel guys make money, everybody makes a lot of money. But the, airline. Airport, you know? so yes, the margin is diluted so badly over the years, unfortunately. Once a price uh, price uh, price war that's our mode, there is no end to that unfortunately. So Singapore Airlines will never compete with price directly. Though some of flight, some of the road, the certain sector, certain season it may actually lower the price. But as a whole, they always try to maintain a premium price. Yes, please. One more question. Yes, please. Yeah. Sorry. Thanks very much for the good presentation on service quality. And my question is, have you come across any best company in India which stands out on service? And why do you think so? Help me one more time. I didn't quite get you. Help me one more time. Sorry about that. No. Have you come across any company in India? Haha. Uh -huh. uh, where you have seen uh, a distinct service differentiation. Okay. If so, 
What is that made you think? I, I guess uh, all countries, uh, all the journey in this area are fairly similar. Uh, I think we all started with the non-service industry as a starting point and slowly you move towards service. And uh, India, I guess, uh, for some of the industry that we have in the, uh, in, in, within uh, India mm -hmm. here, the level of competition may not be as high compared to other Jiaxian. I still remember those are the days when I first went to China 10 over years ago. Uh, you talk to MMC, they agree service is important. You talk to local big giant, a big company, they agree but they don't do anything because they, are, they have different priority. So there are two different things here. Not that they don't believe in service, the level of importance for service, but they have other priority to worry about. Sometimes it's survival, unfortunately. So I think in India, some industry is uh, going to the moment whereby you see it become very uh, uh, obvious that service become very prominent. But some other industry still having enjoying uh, some other competitive factors that uh, is not the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the similar mode compared to many other countries just yet. Take a simple example, allow me to just take a sip of water. My mouth turned dry so fast because of medication. Once uh, India opened up the retail sector, assuming fully, you can imagine all the big, uh, big uh, MNC will come in. Will be a very different ball games by then. Same thing, China went through the same process. When the first, uh, all the big company from the West, uh, the, the retail company come into the market, the local company were all of a sudden got to figure out how can I then survive to differentiate myself compared to others. Small company, they have their own advantage. Of course, they have their disadvantage at the same time. So I guess it's about the pressure timing uh, the journey that we are all going through is just the same thing in Singapore. Long time ago, 20 years ago, we need to convince people uh, that service is important. Now you don't need to convince them, they all know it's important. It's tell me how to get it done. I think it's a journey transition that we are all going through the same path in a sense, I suppose. I don't know whether do I answer your question. Any other thing that uh, you have in mind? Can we take one more? Yeah. Yes, please. Actually, you talk about the service quality in service industry. What about the manufacturing industry? What kind of culture you are suggesting? Long time ago, we considered that the uh, service industry and manufacturing industry are two different ballgames. Long time ago. Nowadays, we say whether you are manufacturing industry or service industry, you have some, somebody in mind called customer. You can't run too far from that. Whether you serve them directly or you serve them through your next tier of distributor, your channel doesn't quite matter. So uh, you take the manufacturer car, uh, uh, car manufacturer, automotive manufacturer, for example. Uh, if they don't worry about customer uh, satisfaction, for example, something must be wrong because at the end of the day, they need to sell the car to someone called customer who is human being. You can't run too far from that. That's why long time ago we say, hey, people are not around and the rest of the service company, they are different priorities. But in today's, the difference is so marginal by now. They also worry about service anyway. You can't run too far from that. Because I still need to sell my item to someone called by the name of our customer. So uh, whether service or manufacturing, I, my view, I think the service uh, experience can't run too far from that. I think it's still the top priority. It's just a matter of time. When you feel the pressure of competition, I think that's where the only thing I can differentiate myself as compared to others is become a service experience, nothing more than that. Because price, uh, price, product, process, all those are things that the people can actually mirror you or actually the, uh, 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 model after you quite easily. While it's by service experience as a whole, you can't, quite, uh, you can't quite learn directly from others per se. Even though people may be willing to share with you, but it's a whole culture issue from within. You can't quite duplicate the culture. I still remember those days. If you happen to know a, a company called uh, Giordano, Giordano is selling all the all the government product in in Asia quite fabric HQ in Hong Kong. The boss uh, was uh, sharing with us in my company some many years ago. He, he was saying that uh, a lot of industry the uh, player was asking him, how come uh, my people when they are in my company they can't deliver a good service. But by the time they go to your company, they are able to do so. It's a whole service culture, it's a whole service system. It's all the, all the factors that we are talking about, it's all from within. 
you can't quite copy the service culture directly. I suppose. Short presentation, short sharing. Hopefully, I didn't bog you down. Thank you very much.